We've been using images on the web since 1993. And if we've learned anything is that misconfigured images directly affect the user experience up to a point where users are dropping off because the page loads too slow. The Next.js image component is a great way to optimize your images. But if you're already using an image provider like Cloudinary, or you want to expand above just optimization, then it's better to use a custom loader so we can use it with any image provider. We'll also see how we can transform our images using Cloudinary and its AI capabilities. We're going to start with an example that uses the next image component to render and optimize a local bridge.jpg image. And if we open the website and check the URL, we're going to see that the next image component automatically constructs the URL to include a quality and width attributes. This helps to compress the image and resize it to a more reasonable size. We can also see that it produces three different sizes for responsiveness that get populated into the source set attributes. By default, Next.js will use your host provider's infrastructure like Vercel's image optimization service to do these optimizations. But if you're already using Cloudinary, then it doesn't make any sense to use another service in your Next.js app. Using both Cloudinary and the Next.js image component will double compress your images, which will result in reduced image quality. Also, the Next.js image component only does optimization, and by not delivering straight from Cloudinary, you miss out on the CDN level magic that automatically delivers the images in the most efficient formats like WebP and AVIF, depending on the browser and device. Let's start by adding a loader prop to the next image component. The loader prop is a callback that provides the source, width and quality attributes for every image, and it needs to return a custom URL for the image. We can obtain them through the arguments and use them to construct the URL like so. We're going to create an array of parameters that use the width and quality attributes and return a Cloudinary URL that uses the Cloudinary cloud name environment variable, which we'll set in a minute. It uses the parameters and ends with the source attribute. This is how we can point to images that are already uploaded into our Cloudinary library. Setting up the next public Cloudinary cloud name variable is easy. All you need to do is just add it to the .env file or add it into your CI/CD setup, whether that's Vercel or GitHub Actions, etc. If you don't know your Cloudinary cloud name, you can check it out by visiting the dashboard and copying the cloud name value. Now, since we're pointing to Cloudinary, we need to change the source attribute. Instead of pointing to the local image, we can point to the image that we have in Cloudinary, and that would be bridge.jpg in my case. If I reload the page, we'll see that the same image renders, but the URL points to Cloudinary. And it also includes all of the width, quality, and other attributes that we defined. This image is now optimized by Cloudinary. But providing the loader prop for every image in our app will be a tedious job. Luckily for us, we can move this into its own function and register it as a global loader. So we can create a new JS script that exports the function as a default and then go to our next config.js file to include it and register it as a global loader. We'll modify the images property, we'll set the loader to custom and the loader file to point to the new script that we just created. Now we can go back to our file and delete the loader. And if we refresh, we'll see the same image and it still points to the Cloudinary URL. And this is how you can take the loader and register it as a global loader so you don't have to repeat yourself. But there is even a better way to use Cloudinary in your Next.js application. And that is the next Cloudinary package. To install the package, you need to do npm install next-cloudinary. The benefit of using the next Cloudinary package is that we don't even need to register a custom loader. I'm going to go back into the next config file and disable the global loader configuration. Now let's import from next Cloudinary the CLD image component. Instead of using the next image, I'm going to replace it with the CLD image and we'll keep everything the same. Now if I refresh the page, we'll see that we still have the same image. It still points to the Cloudinary URL, but we don't have neither the loader prop or the global loader configuration. 
But aside from the optimizations, we also gain access to Cloudinary's transformations. So let's see an example. I'm going to change the source to a cat picture that I have in my Cloudinary library. There we go. Now I want to change the crop property and set it to fill. Now I want to remove the background using AI automatically. There we go. Now I want to apply a tint to the image with the value of 70 using the blue and purple colors. There we go. Now I want to underlay a different photo that I have in my library tagged as space. Much better. Let's see even a cooler example. I'm going to change the source to point to the samples folder, the people folder and jazz. And I'm going to remove the previous properties. There we go. We're going to keep the crop property and set it to fill. Now what we want to do is remove the woman with the raised hands in the background and replace the saxophone with a cat. Let's try that. First, we're going to provide the remove prop and we can type in woman with raised hands. Cloudinary will understand what we want to say here. I'm just going to save and reload the page. And there we go. We have removed the woman with the raised hands. Now I want to replace the saxophone with a holding cat. Instead of holding the saxophone, we want the person to be holding a cat. And there we go. Instead of a saxophone, we have a cat. So aside from optimizing the images, with the CLD image component, we can use Cloudinary's AI capabilities and achieve some really cool results. If you want to check all the transformation, make sure to check the next Cloudinary documentation. Under guides, you'll see the background removal, image optimization, underlays, text overlays, etc. Next up, we'll learn how to upload images with the CLD upload widget component.